Welcome to Ark Omega, a massive mod that adds over 300,000 different dinos to tame and over thousands of bosses to defeat. There are dinos made from wood and dinos that can create black holes, plus so many more. I have 100 days to complete Ark Omega. Can I do it? Let's find out. And so it began like any other day. Waking up, scratching my arm at the implant and wondering where the hell I am. However, this time it was slightly different. I didn't have to worry about getting my first basic tools as I had already been provided them thanks to the Amiga mod, so I went ahead and started harvesting up some basic resources around me just to have them on me in case something happens. I then spotted my nope. first modded creature, a self-destructive Megaloceros. I didn't want to tussle with that guy. I then found a Resilient Triceratops and I needed some hide. I couldn't find hide anywhere and all of these dinos were modded. So thankfully I was able to knock it out with my stronger club that we got provided and I got to work at hacking at it when a Soul Essence Terror Bird jumped off the cliff near me. I started hacking at it, but unfortunately I was not able to harvest it, resulting in my death to the Soul Terror Bird. I then tried to get my body back and once again died to the random Terror Bird nearby. I then found another trike Surprise, and this was a companion trike and apparently it summons in little bats to attack you. I had no idea, so I thought I'd just continue trying to club it when, well, this bat was packing a punch. It definitely hurt me and I had to run away to get escape. I then found my first dodo on the beach side. Finally, I could knock something out and get it for high oh, no. when I accidentally hit an ice triceratops. This guy fires ice blocks at you. I had no idea. I don't even know how I angered it and I was already low from the bats, but thankfully it spared my life and just de-aggroed on me. I have no idea why, but I will take it. I don't even want to know why it aggroed on me in the first place. However, I was super low due to its attack, so I kind of just had to hobble around everywhere while still trying to get a dodo knocked out so I could get some basic hide. So, you know, I, I still didn't have any hide to make anything. I was finally able to make an awesome spyglass and I went ahead building a basic base with some stone walls and the Amiga table and taking a look at what we could make. Day four began by me bowling my first Dillo. Now this was a siren Dillo and essentially it would send out a song that would stun you and drag you towards it. However, because I bowled it, I was able to shank it mul multiple times until it died and I successfully killed my first modded Ark Amiga Dino. I picked up the charm, dropped the bed so I could respawn at my base and made myself the kibble machine. This would allow me to make the kibble in order to tame up the subsequent Amiga dinos. I also knocked out a dodo and just for fun killed an ichthyonis because these bastards just haunt me in my dreams. I then continued knocking out some more dodos when a beta wood raptor decided to murder me. I then found a comet Tyrannodon and thought I could try and tame it. Why not, right? What's the worst that can happen? He kills us? Ha! <laughs> I'll take those odds. Oh, Jesus! All right, it rains comets from above upon us. That's, uh, yep, that seems cool. I then continued my day by grabbing all the dodos that I had tamed, as well as trying to tame up more of the dodos, as these guys would be paramount to getting our first dinosaur eggs in order to tame up the dinos. I managed to kill the beta necromancer dodo when it dropped a unique saddle token as well. Sometimes when you kill the dinos, you get their specific unique saddle token. Cried up the last of my dodos and then went ahead with a pack of compies and well, you can see how well that went for me. Grabbed a couple of extra dodos and found a gravity defying dimensional Dilophosaurus when I tried to lob spears at it to try and get it out of the sky and to try and kill it. The next day arrived and it started by me killing this cloner Overraptor. I needed the souls and it was stuck so it made for an easy victim. I also killed the Ichthyornis because every chance I get I want to kill these bastards, they're just so annoying. I also placed some structures around the base to get those up and running, including a smithy. And then I got a visitor from a beta detonate Rex and a Bronto going at each other. So I had to try and survive this onslaught with the Bronto constantly swinging its tail, the Rex going after the Bronto, and my little tiny stone base without a roof complete. So at any time, they could just come in and absolutely attack the base and damage it. Oh my god, I'm gonna just hide. I then found a beta loot dodo chilling on a mountain side, so I thought I'd give it a shot and try to kill this thing. Not realizing that everything in the vicinity would aggro on me and that these guys had increased stats. They were a lot stronger than the standard dodos, and it also wasn't vulnerable. So I pulled out my newly crafted Hades torch and got to work at trying to punch this guy to death when I got one shot by an uncontrollable raptor. I don't know if it's gonna take extra damage from the torch. Heck, I don't even, yep, okay, it's not vulnerable. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
The next day I went on a bit of a killing spree in the morning with my new torch. I was able to kill most of the surrounding dinos around me, gathering their souls in the process when I found a trike. Now, I started killing this trike because I figured, you know what, I'll be able to kill it. It's by itself. It's a low level. Little did I realize there was an entire herd of them. So, that was a quick death. I was able to kill a Pearl Compi as well as a Spiritual Parasaur and a Volatile Raptor as well. As a Zombie Ferox, I was just going on a bit of a killing spree, trying to get as many souls as I possibly could so that I could upgrade some of my basic armor. I then found some tech boots, which I couldn't wear, obviously, because I had no access to 10 grams, and I went ahead and died to an ultimate stalker Tyranodon that came out of absolutely nowhere while I was trying to kill a Carbonemus. The next day, I finally had made my egg collector machine, and I threw my dodos out to get absorbed by it. Essentially, how this works is you choose the female dinos you want it to absorb, and it will absorb them, killing them permanently, but allowing them to still produce eggs. I also imbued my flak armor with the basic essence that I had so that I could be slightly stronger when it came to fighting these very, very strong tiers of dinos. I then tried to kill this Solterra bird from earlier and well, oh god, everything's enraged on me. Oh! <laughs> god damn! Well, that was a big mistake. After retrieving my body, I was able to make my first kibble and I killed a feather light as well as a beta spiritual dodo for their essence and souls and a wind parasaur as well. I then found a lightning pteranodon which was hopefully going to be my first tame. This was the elemental kibble that I had made up earlier. All I needed to do was knock it out hopefully and I would be able to tame it up with the elemental kibble that I had made earlier. A single headshot to the head and I was able to knock it out thankfully and I fed it the elemental kibble and it was able to get tamed up. My first tame and my first flight. I mean, technically my first usable tame. However, Bolt would not make it through the night. We just lost Bolt and my life to an ultimate zombie tech raptor. Day sinks would bring more pain. A Gorgon Rex spawned outside of our base, but I was able to get away from it. However, an Alpha Earthquake Rex decided to appear and I got sucked into a black hole where I was killed by the Earthquake Rex. This was going to be fun. I then respawned to try and get my body back when Mr. Alpha Earthquake Rex decided to reappear twice and killed me again. Thankfully, it wasn't all bad news and I was able to go ahead and knock out this wood triceratops and successfully tame it up. So I had my first herbivore and I was able to use this to gather some berries. The next day began with me absorbing the wood triceratops into my egg machine. Like I said, once you absorb the female versions of the tame, they will continuously produce eggs. You just lose access to them. I then found a windstorm to run it on, bowled it, and then went ahead, backed out of its storm with a sliver of health left and tried to knock it out. Thankfully, a couple of headshots to the head and it was sleepy time for our Tyranodon friend. I then found a volatile Tyranodon, got that knocked out as well, before I was absolutely murdered by a Crystal Feral. After successfully taming up the first Tyranodon, I managed to get it cried up, back to base and saddled up, when a Prime Siren Rock Drake decided to pay me a visit and stun me, unfortunately. Well, you can guess what happened next. Are you kidding me? Take off Tyranodon. <laughs> Brand new Tyranodon just died. <laughs> the suffering didn't end there, however, with the Rock Drake also killing me again and destroying all the structures in my base. Thankfully, I still had the Windstorm Tyranodon so I could fly around on that and use that to get around. The beginning of day nine meant base building time. I had decided to settle on a mountain's edge just up from the starting point of that beach when a rock elemental just spawned in the middle of nowhere in front of my base. So, Instead of trying to tease it, I just decided to walk it off the edge and then I continued building up my base. Now I was going for a very basic design here. This was the beginnings of it. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking to be completely honest when designing this base. It's uh, very questionable. I was kind of going for like a, I don't know, like a V shape, a wedge shape. Nonetheless, that was what I had to work with for the time being. The following day began by me taming up a zombie parasaur. I then went back to base and decided to place all my various workstations, such as my Amiga workbench, the kibble machine, a bunch of refining forges, mortar and pestle, as well as my single bed, when I ventured out to try and knock out some more pteranodons. I did manage to knock out two pteranodons and I placed my egg collector, returned back to those pteranodons to tame them up. Thankfully, they did tame up. However, these guys were going to just be absorbed by my egg collecting machine so that we could continue producing eggs. The next morning began and I started by knocking out some more wild dinos. 
I was going to need a lot of egg production in order to progress through Amiga's tier system. Now let me quickly explain how Amiga's tier system works. There are 12 tameable variants, each with their own abilities and stat multipliers. Some being stronger than others and some having more utility than the others. Now there are also 6 different tiers which also boost stats depending on the tier you tame. However, you need to have the variant eggs from the previous tier before you can tame the next tier. So I needed to basically tame all of the basic variants in order to get to the next tier, which was the beta, then alpha, then prime, then ultimate, then omega. So I continued on my rampage of taming up any dinos that I didn't have, any of the variants that I didn't have, when I had knocked out a whole bunch and they all vanished. Something had managed to kill them all. So all I was left with was a single knocked out trike and I had about five different dinos knocked out. Thankfully the farming trike did tame up and I was able to get that back to my egg machine as well. The next day I had a track of Pomeo Scorpius outside of my base so I had to kill it when I conveniently decided to walk off the edge for some reason. I couldn't stop this, it just happened and I just walked off the edge. None of the keys were pressed down so I don't know why. But on my way back to the base, I found a couple of friends on the way. Only difference being these friends wanted to murder me. Not once, but twice. I then took my farming Triceratops out for some berries, went ahead and knocked out a shield Triceratops, and then decided to get sucked into a Singularity Vortex, losing my new Pteranodon and my life. After that fun experience, I had nothing on me but a parachute, so I had to secret agent it back down to my body in order to retrieve my corpse so that I could get my items back. I then successfully Mark. tamed up the shield triceratops from earlier, and then I managed to find a blizzard pteranodon that I also was able to knock out, as well as a meteor anki. However, I was only able to tame up the pteranodon and get it in a soul ball before I died to an alpha detonate raptor. Wonderful. The next day consisted of more knocking out and more taming, mainly of pteranodons, and I also found a packy as well that I could knock out. Main reason I was doing pteranodons because they only needed one kibble, so they were our best bet in order to tame up. They required the least amount of resources. So I was able to get a bunch of different tames tamed up today, and I was really happy about that. I then managed to find an uncontrollable Parasaur and I had no idea what it did but it seemed very strong so I got to work at knocking it out, ran out of arrows however so I had to club it till it submitted to my brute power and thankfully I was able to tame it up as well. However I couldn't get a saddle on it, I couldn't ride it and then it finally occurred to me it's an uncontrollable Parasaur, that makes sense now. I made some more narcotics as well as figuring out that you could actually imbue saddles with the essence increasing their armor. I threw out the uncontrollable parasaur with a saddle and tried to ride it and it just booted me off, instead deciding to go on a rampage to anything and everything around it in the vicinity. It did have a very high stats however, it just was not going to work for me. I then wanted to test the strength of one of my new flyers, the explosive pteranodon, and he hit for 900 damage. This guy is one of our strongest tames. I then finished up the day by screwing up a knockout by shooting a collective pteranodon in the body instead of the head and it managed to fly away from me. Oh god, it's swimming for me. Creepy ass damn piranha. After dealing with the dimensional piranha, I then decided to get yeeted off my pteranodon by my favourite teams in all of art, the micro raptors. And well, yeah, I got one shot by a beta earth rubble goal. I also imbued my Pteranodon saddle and it got a massive increase in armor which is going to be awesome for us. And thankfully my Pteranodon after flying out there was still alive, only barely. I now needed to try and get my body back. Thankfully I was able to rush down there, dodge the elemental and get my body and then fly out of there without any casualties happening. I then managed to knock out and tame a wood Pteranodon to add to my collection. I wrapped up the day by trying to kill a loot pteranodon when a mech appeared out of freaking nowhere trying to murder me. Fudge Knuckles? Where the hell did he come from? The next day involved lots more tranking and lots more taming, starting with a brutal Dodicarus, and then I decided to just purvey the damage that a meteor strike would do from the heavens above. Thankfully it didn't affect me, but I managed to find a Phoenix Anki and knock that out as well. And then I found a Brutal Pteranodon, which I also knocked out. These guys were just falling like dominoes to me, as well as an Overlord Pteranodon. Now these dinos were males, but they were going to be flies that I could use to get around on. 
With my new Dodic, I was then able to go ahead and farm up a bunch of stone so that I could complete my base into the design that I wanted. More or less so, I suppose. The next day was spent farming up resources and getting more of the base ready. I needed a bunch of metal, a bunch of berries so that I could make some more narcotics, which would allow me to make the Amiga narcotics. And then I found a trucker blood crystal wyvern and managed to knock that out. I managed to successfully tame up the brand new blood crystal wyvern, chucked it in a soul ball, flew out of there before anything could kill it. Now, this guy didn't actually work how I expected it to. Here's an overview of how the tracker variant works. I thought we were going to be able to see a bunch of different dinos on the map and be able to see what they are, but it didn't really work like that, unfortunately, when a Microraptor managed to knock me off my Pteranodon and kill me. Absolutely destroyed by a goddamn fucking Microraptor. I hate those bastards. They need to be purged in the fires of hell. After returning back to my body, I found a Beta Psychosis Rex that I wanted to try and tame. However, it was losing a fight to a Cinemacrops and a, a Diplo. So that's wonderful for me. Bro, he murdered it. What the hell? Hope wasn't completely lost, however, as I did manage to find a Beta Warp Shadow Man. After tranking it multiple times and it running away from me, I was able to knock it out. I tamed it up the next morning and this was my first beta T creature that I had gotten. So I decided to test it out on this Parasaur here, just to see how much damage it would deal. It was pretty solid, 2300 damage is quite a lot of damage. After venturing around with it a little bit, I decided to try and fight this collective gas bag, not realizing that there was an Amiga Zombie Triceratops next to me, and I accidentally hit it with my warp attack nuking me and the shadow main in the process however it got so much better than that after returning to the location where i died my body was gone i lost two tames in that i then decided to spectate a fight between a beta self-destructive rex and an amiga wind gas bag thinking i could tame the beta rex if it decided to kill the gas bag however it died to the gas bag and me not realizing self-destructive meant blew me up and my bird in the process. Thankfully, I still had my blood crystal wyvern. However, I got freaking launched into the stratosphere when jumping off it. No idea why that happened for, but it got so much better than this. On returning to my body to try and retrieve it, I got attacked by an alpha earthquake saber tooth. I then managed to find a beta fire tech rex that looked real juicy and something that I could actually use to damage stuff and kill things. You already know how my luck is going to pan out though, don't you? Don't you? We couldn't tame it because it got absolutely murdered by something nearby. However, it looked at my luck was finally starting to turn around. I had found a 119 Supernova Rex wandering around down near the beach, and I had to go for it. However, on wandering down the beach, I attacked a random Dilophosaur, and it spawned in a goddamn dragon. I then knocked out a Beta Astral Dodo so that I could add it to my egg machine, and I tamed up the Supernova Rex. Cried it and got it back to base so I could saddle it up and test out its abilities. I managed to imbue its saddle as well, increasing everything about it and making it even tankier. Now, I decided to test it out by attacking a wood stego. Obviously not my best decision as they do take reduced damage. However, up against these Sabertooth and other dinos, it was doing a lot of damage and I finally had a reliable damage dealer that I could use to kill things and collect souls. Oh no, we killed some stuff. Yo! <laughs> what the fuck is going on? We're doing damage. It's nuts. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go! I returned to base and found all my walls damaged for some reason. I have no idea what did it, but there was nothing here when I got back. Thankfully, all my structures were still standing and I was able to make the kibble. I did, however, also lose my crop plots, which once again wasn't that big of a deal. I managed to tame up the Beta Astral Dodo, and I also knocked out a Beta Wind Dilophosaur and a Resilient Tyrannid. I also found a Beta Fairy Tyrannid on just chilling on the side of a cliff. One headshot, boom bada boom, got that knocked out. Cried up my Wyvern because I was getting attacked by a Prime Random Sabertooth, and just died to it so that I could save my Wyvern. Managed to tame up the Fairy PT as well as taking out my Singularity Rex and trying to fight a Soul Parasaur. 
Thankfully, I killed the Soul Parasol, gathering a bunch of souls in the process. However, this Amiga Gacha had something to say about that. I just saw that. That was an Amiga Tsunami Gacha. Holy shizes, mother freakers. I then teamed up a Resilient Trike and a Wind Trike and found myself on the receiving end of a Singularity Vortex. I then spent the rest of the day farming up materials. The next day I found the perfect mount, a Tsunami Pteranodon. However, it killed me as I bowled it and I proceeded to have a mental breakdown. But it killed me... Oh man, this mod is absolutely murdering me. I was able to tame up the Tsunami Pteranodon in the end anyway though. 150 and it came out at 224, I was pretty happy. I then found a Supernova Pteranodon and I had to tame. The Cosmic Dinos in this mod are super strong and they have really good abilities. I also found a Beta Necromancer Listro that I had to get knocked out and tamed up as well. It was a female, super easy tame to get. And then I found some more dinos to knock out and try and tame, including a Dodo, a Spectral Dillo, and then another Beta Controller Listro. I also found a Beta Stone Dodo, which I knocked out. The next morning, I made myself the net gun and headed out to tame up the dinos that I knocked out earlier. It was then time to test out the new net gun. Now, this kind of had the same similarities as the uh, the net launcher, I think it's called, but uh, it's not as strong. So this essentially allows you to bowl a creature's 25% larger, I believe. That's what the that's what the terminology is. So you can pretty much use it on like parasols and stuff like that. So I managed to use it on some PTs, which I knocked out. A beta farming Jabol, which is going to help me out greatly. It's going to pretty much deal with all the farming side of things back at the base. As well as a beta brutal Jaboa so that I could get the egg tea. Now, even though these guys are mammals, they are still able to produce eggs in this mod. The same applies to like Fenris and stuff like that. Where they aren't technically able to reproduce as uh, eggs, but they do produce eggs. Nonetheless, I was flying back at the night time and I got hit by a Prime Thunderstorm Rock Elemental out of nowhere. Just absolutely obliterated me. I returned the next day to team up all the creatures that I had knocked out the previous night as well as to retrieve my body. I also knocked out an Obsidian Ovis and tamed that up. These guys will passively produce Obsidian over time. And then I found an Explosive Raptor, net gunned it, tranked it and was able to get that knocked out. I then found a beta stone jug bug. I thought this guy could be useful for obviously producing stone, so I went ahead and tried to knock it out. Successfully managed to knock it out in the process, however, and decided to take it for a bit of a test run once it was tamed. On returning to base, I threw out all of my new teams that I had just gotten, separating the ones that I wanted to keep from the ones that were going to get absorbed from the egg collector. And just like that, they were all gone. Aside from the farming Jaboa and the Obsidian Ovis, the rest were going bye-bye. I then decided to take my harvesting to round it on out for a bit of a test run. These guys had the special ability where you pressed X and they would harvest resources from everywhere around them in the vicinity. Now, they also had increased weight, which would help drastically with this. And you can see here we were getting a crap ton of materials in the process. However, one thing I did notice was that it wasn't the greatest at gathering metal, however, so I would still probably have to gather that myself. The next day was filled with absolute pain. And more pain. And more pain. And another mental breakdown. I love getting killed by ultimate bugs. It's my favorite pastime. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I was waiting for that. The next morning, I found a big old scary Amiga Rex. I followed this guy around in order to get all the essence and souls that I could get from him. I also got my first Amiga soul. Then I decided to test the net gun out on Akano to see if we could strip it down. That worked out perfectly for me, ending up killing me and my Pteranodon in uh, the process. Another mental I breakdown, here I come. Seriously. <laughs> I then went ahead and tried to add more flies to my repertoire by knocking out a Plague Pteranodon and then trying to knock out this Lightning Storm Dodo. However, this Gamma Ray Zombie Dodo had other plans and decided to Gamma Ray my Pteranodon into Oblivion. So not only did I lose a Pteranodon, I then also lost this Dodo that I was trying to knock out. However, I did knock out an Explosive Pteranodon to round up the day. I then knocked out a Beta Wind Pteranodon. However, I did get chased by a Raptor and changed its mind at the last minute, but I got killed by Explosive Ants instead. This mod is so much fun. I did manage to tame up the Plague Pteranodon from the day before, so I could fly again. And I also tamed up that Dodo that also was the cause of losing my other Pteranodon. 
As you can see, so much taming was going on here because I was constantly trying to get the other tiers so we could level up and get stronger dinos. And then I wanted to get a beaver dam cementing pace, but uh, obviously the beavers have incredible powers, so I had to be careful and make sure I dodged all of their extra abilities. And then I found it. A beta brutal Tyrannodon at 147. This guy was going to be super strong. I then spent the rest of the afternoon knocking out various teams located across the beach. There were quite a few beta versions of these dinos. So if I could get those guys knocked out and tamed up, I'd be able to put them in the egg collector. After returning back to the server for a few days, I was camped by a beta Gamma Ray Mantis. So I threw out some teams that I thought could handle it, but this guy was just absolutely relentless. He did so much damage to us. I almost lost so many teams because of him. I was trying to take him off the edge of the cliff. I was trying to do everything in my power to get this guy away from my base. He would just kill me again and again and again. I spent the entirety of day 32 just trying to get out of my base and trying to evade this mantis. So after brutally dying to it over and over again, I thought, what better revenge than to tame this sucker up and make it my undying slave? So that's exactly what I went ahead to try and do. Net gunned it and kept pumping it full of trank arrows. And of course, a Kano had to get involved in the process. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, I'm going insane! Bro, that's cheating! You fucking bastard! After taming up the Gamma Ray Mantis, I then threw out all of the tames that I had tamed up while being out, so the Dodos and the Pteranodon to get them absorbed into the Egg Machine, and then it was time to use the Mantis to see how much damage he would do. And I was getting absolutely obliterated by an Alpha Stone Sabertooth. However, I changed to my club and I was able to kill this guy with ease. I then continued back to my base from my spot when some scorpions decided to ambush me and, well, guess what decided to happen. This brand new mantis that had been causing me so much grief died. So after the mantis debacle, I then went ahead and lined the outside of the base with some dinosaur gates as well as some metal spike walls. Hopefully to deter any tames or wild dinos that were going to come up to my base and attack me. So it was looking like it was going to be pretty solid base defense and prevent any dinos from getting in. There was this side that I hadn't really covered, but I think it'd be all right. I then decided to place down the soul furnace, which would use souls to power itself. And it would act essentially two times as faster as a preserving bin and a industrial forge. I didn't really like the idea of using my souls to power it. However, as I was kind of limited on the amount of souls I had. I then also planted my crop plots to get those going for the future tiers of kibble. The next day was spent organizing my base and placing all of my structures that I needed to continue through this series. I also expanded the top half of my base by introducing more crop plots as well as a sort of area where I could walk up to and go onto the roof. I chucked some metal railings down so I could hopefully protect my crops and crop plots from breaking from anything trying to destroy our base, but I don't really know what I decided to use that top area for. It was then time to try and tame my first alpha creature. Thankfully, I did find this alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus that I managed to knock out, and this was hopefully going to be my first alpha. Built some spike walls to try and protect it, and then I found an alpha fire to run it on. I then ventured a little further out and found an explosive parasol which I knocked out as well as an alpha fairy to run it on. I was starting to get into the alpha tier of things and I was really excited. I also tried to net an alpha banshee parasol but it killed me as well as a beta blizzard featherlight. Thankfully I returned and was able to knock both of these guys out as well as an extra pteranodon and the banshee parasol was giving me so much grief. Look at this. <laughs> Oh, stubborn bastard. Eventually, I did manage to get him knocked out, however, and I had a whole list of dinos ready to get tamed up. The next day, I returned to my Alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus and successfully tamed it up. I also made myself a soul gun, so it was going to be much easier to cry up all the tames that I had managed to get. And you can see here, I did get quite a few of them, if not all of the ones that we had on the taming list. And these were all going to go towards the egg collector. I then decided to jump off after finding a Comet Packy, but I got killed by an Alpha Water Raptor. Thankfully, I was able to return with one of the new Pteranodons that I had, and I was able to just save my Beta Brutal Pteranodon. 
This is why I don't name them for, because I don't get a chance to get attached to them. I found Knocked Out and tamed an Alpha Psychosis Pteranodon. I also tamed up the previous tames as well that I had Knocked Out. So they were pretty easy to get once I was able to get the Kibble into them and they were actually asleep so they couldn't use their special abilities. But I was out of Soul Balls so I had to make a Dino Train back to base and I actually managed to tame up the Pachyrhinosaurus as well. So after all my hard labor trying to tame these guys up, it was finally time to sacrifice them to the Egg Collector. All me beautiful dinos that were so painstakingly tamed, gone. Just like that. But it was for a good cause. We now had multiple tiers of eggs so we could finally move up and start getting more of the tiers. You can see here, we were now able to get some prime tier dinos, which is exactly what I set out to do. Not before I tamed up another beta harvesting Pteranodon though, and also took out my new Alpha Waterstorm Dodicarus for a test run, just to see what kind of damage it could do since it is now our strongest tame that we own. So it was a bit of a tough one, but I mean, its ability was on a very long cooldown, but when I finally did get the chance to use it on this Kentro here, it actually did quite a lot of damage. Obviously, this is a terrible subject to test this on because the Spectral Kentro just went invisible, but it was still dealing a thousand damage per tick, so we just had to find something that didn't turn invulnerable from us. The next day while out, I found an Alpha Lethal Dillo that I knocked out, as well as my first quest scroll. Now, unfortunately, this quest scroll was useless to kill like 400 compies, I think it was. 1,000 wild dinos while riding a compie, actually, that's so much worse. I then took my beta Brutal Pteranodon out and just killed a bunch of stuff over here in the uh, White Cliffs. Just so that I could get, get a bunch of souls as well, because I was struggling to get souls in essence. And this guy was our strongest guy. Now, I then also found an Amiga Astral Jaboa, which I wanted to kill. Because when you kill your first Amiga tier dino, you get the Amiga Beacon, which is something that we'll need later. These are amount of souls that I got from farming for the day. A decent haul, but we could definitely do better. The following day, we found a female Beta Brutal Pteranodon. This meant that I could tame it and breed it up with my male counterpart for an offspring and imprint on the offspring. I was able to knock it out and dodge the killer compies while in the process, which was awesome. We then found an element parasaur, which we harvested up for a butt ton of element. You can see all the element here. And then we found an alpha siren aloe. Now we really wanted to tame this up. However, the beta brutal Anki or alpha brutal Anki had other plans in mind and killed it. We returned the next day to tame up the beta brutal pteranodon and then we got them breeding. I needed that offspring egg and I finally got it. We found an Amiga Soul on the way back to base and we took out a Colossal Triceratops as well. I did this just for shits and giggles. It was a huge Triceratops, so I figured we could kill it easily. Then, the unthinkable happened. My Pteranodon died to an uncontrollable familiar. This was the aftermath and this is why, once again, I must reiterate why we don't name our team so far. <laughs> because they just get one shot by absolutely everything in this. Which really sucks, but nonetheless it is what happens. We then made the Amiga Beacon as well to test out what exactly this did because I figured we'd need it for something later on. So we took a read of what exactly the Amiga Beacon does and essentially it's a summoner for bosses and potential wild tames. We then spotted a Prime Fairy Rex and well that died to a Amargosaurus. So once again another tame down the drain that we could have tamed. We began the day by increasing the armor of a PT saddle, and then we took our harvesting PT out to gather metal and resources. Now, I wasn't really good at gathering metal. Unfortunately, you can see he was mainly just getting stone, but we did manage to get some wooden thatch. However, an Amiga Psychosis RG had other plans and decided to murder my PT in the process. So, me being who I am, accepted my fate and died to the RG as well. We then wanted to test the Amiga Beacon. So, we chucked in 10 elemental souls into an Amiga Soul to see what we would get. To, so this should be a collective creature. A basic collective oil jug bug has been summoned. Well, that's super fucking disappointing. There it is there. <laughs> we then knocked out and tamed a beta taming scorpion. So guys, I journeyed out to the Valgiro cave just located near our base down near uh, 3451. It's just really close. It's the artifact of the Crag Cave, and we actually got a blueprint for a Mastercraft compound bow. We got a bunch of other stuff as well. We got uh, some saddles from flying around, hitting up drops as well. We got some chitin, some chainsaws, some carbonemus, and dodicarus. Just a bunch of random uh, extra. There was an alpha meteor saver that we wanted to tame up and had built a trap for. So we carded it into the trap, but we were stuck and couldn't get out, and it killed us. Wonderful. 
So we brought out our team in Scorpkin to try and knock it out. And well, that was a massive mistake as this meteor destroyed the stone trap. I was not expecting that. But it also destroyed our Scorpion, and our Scorpion did absolutely no torpor damage whatsoever. It then went ahead and destroyed our base as well in the process. Here's me thinking we're nice and safe in our nice little stone base, and it absolutely gets decimated by this guy. So we gave up on trying to tame the Meteor Sabertooth. We then found a loot Tyranodon and killed it for heaps of loot. However, the loot was super disappointing. Not really anything that we could use in a bunch of primitive stuff, so I was a bit disheartened by that, but nonetheless we had to move on. It was then time to take our lethal Dillo out for a test run, and it absolutely decimated all of these beavers around us. Now, the main reason we did this was because there was a loot beaver that we wanted to kill, and I didn't want these guys aggroing on us while we were trying to fight the beaver. So, we successfully managed to kill the beaver, and the loot that we got from it was okay-ish. We were honestly more excited for the crops and jerky. On day 45, I was able to make the Mastercraft compound bow and just in time because we had found this prime Colossus Andrew Sarkis. So I got to work at firing tranks into it, but I had my hardships losing my beta brutal Tyranodon in the process and my life twice as well. I only had an egg left of those Tyranodons, but it didn't really matter anymore because we had the prime Colossal Andrew Sarkis successfully knocked out. All we needed to do now was feed it the necessary kibble. We made the kibble back at base and dumped it in the Andrew Sarkis, taming it up in the process. We then brought the big boy back to base and imbued his saddle to take him for a test run. That's so scary. I don't want to lose this guy already. Oh yeah, forgot about that attack. I don't know what the hell happened there. Yo, we killing things now. Let's go. The next day was literally just spent slaughtering countless amounts of dinos. We also killed a couple of Megas here and there, but it was mainly just slaughtering as many dinos as we possibly could. I just needed to farm as many souls and essence as I could. We finally had a decent team that could actually deal some damage and kill things now and not get one shot itself. Although we did kill our first Paragon Wolf as well and got our first Paragon Soul. However, I got booted off for some reason and was murdered by a Prime Wind Perlovia. Thankfully, we were able to return back there and he had pretty much decimated everything in the area once again. We really love this guy. He's great. I, some weird glitch happened here. I have no idea what it was. But we finally decided to give him a name. Hulk. With Hulk in tow, we found an ultimate loot Brontosaurus at 146. It had a huge amount of health at 1.2 million. Unfortunately, I did get killed by it. I, for some reason, whenever we jumped like that or whenever Hulk was on a weird angle, we got booted off the saddle and killed. So it happened a couple of times, but we threw out our Alpha Lethal Dillo as well to try and help us out here. And we spent the entire day trying to kill this loot Bronto for some loot. And you know what the worst part is? The loot was pretty dog shit. I don't think it was worth us killing it. Ooh, baby. Look at all those juicy souls. Heaps of Amigas too, which is great. Look at all of that. Mmm, damn. The next few days were pretty much spent just murdering anything we could find, really. We were super happy that we now had Hulk and we could actually deal damage to stuff. We were killing Paragons and everything. But we almost lost Hulk due to fall damage. Look at this damage come in. Look at that. Our entire health bar just absolutely depleted. We found a couple of more Paragon Souls from killing some Paragon creatures. So I wasn't actually aware of how the Paragon Souls work. And you'll see that come into play later on in the video when I should have been spending more time doing that instead of what I was actually doing. But nonetheless, I still managed to knock out an Alpha Teleporter Dodo. We killed Bolt, I don't know who that was, and knocked out a Prime Resilient Pteranodon, and we killed another Paragon. Also knocked out another Prime Psychosis Parasaur, and we killed an Alpha Loot Deinonychus for some more loot. Not really anything crazy here, once again. I, it wasn't really, it was mainly just for the grinder. We also tried to knock out this Alpha Dimensional Parasaur, but killed it instead. We then found and killed our first soul dino, getting a bunch of souls in the process. We then returned to tame up the Pteranodon, the Dodo, and the Parasaur from the previous day. We then thought, why not give the beacon one more try? This time it summoned in an Alpha Brutal Basilisk. 
Now, the Brutals have the ability to cause bleed damage, so we were considering taming it, but in the end, we decided to just murder it. Day 51, and we spotted an ultimate lethal Rex. Now, these guys are absolute beasts. The lethal variant allows the dino's attacks to apply a stacking effect, causing them to deal more damage after more successive bites. They'll also receive a heal for a percentage of their max health when they proc this. You'll see this come into play when we get against the bosses. So we were able to successfully knock it out. We then instantly ran back to base, chucked the kibble into him and got him tamed up. We also made a saddle and imbued it for him as well. And the saddle that we got for him was really well. Then the rest of the afternoon was spent murdering everything in sight. You can see the stacking effect there. We were hitting for 30,000, then it jumped to 27,000. And you can see there on the mammoth, the same situation. So this was going to be great for the boss fights when we got to them. We then figured it was time to take our big boy up against something else. An Amiga Brutal Alpha Carnotaurus. Now, yes, I probably could have knocked this out and attempted to tame it, but eh, we didn't have the necessary tier of kibble just yet. But you can see here that we were starting to deal a butt ton of damage, and the damage jumped from 48,000 to 144,000 to 1.3 million damage. So I figured we'd try and test this guy on one of the bosses. So we summoned in a basic pygmy broodmother with 10 million health. Now, the fight itself was grueling. We did take a little bit of damage here and there from the Pygmy Broodmother, but I did bring health potions with me. And you can see here that the damage did start to stack up. And when we propped our lethality effect, we started getting health regen. And just like that, we had killed our first boss in the Amiga series. Only day 52 it took us to get here. But we also came up with a name for our Rex, Fatality. We then decided to go ahead and try and take on another boss. This time it was a dimensional broodmother. Honestly, this fight was just super annoying more than anything and tedious because the bloody bastard kept spinning us around so that we were facing our backs to it. But nonetheless, with the lethality effect of fatality, we were able to absolutely murder the broodmother in the process. The next day, we went up against one of the elemental bosses. Now, very similar to the tiers of tames you can get, the bosses also have stat changes. So, for example, the resilient bosses that we were fighting the day before, they only have a two times stat multiplier, I believe. The water elementals and the other guys have a six times. So, we jumped off Fatality before he could die, cryoed him up, and just ran away from this water Megapithecus, accepting my fate to die in the process, but saving Fatality from a murder. So, on returning back to base, we made up the Soul Grinder, which we could use to grind boss souls into shards, and that would allow us to essentially upgrade our dinos more, as well as some of our structures. So, I thought I could upgrade my Rex by using a Paragon Soul and some Amiga Essence, Turns out you can only actually upgrade the creature whose Paragon Soul you have. So in this example, I used a Titan and Nina drone. Turns out I can only upgrade a Titan and Nina drone to the Amiga stage, not an actual Rex. So I needed a Rex Paragon Soul to actually be able to do that. The next day was spent murdering more Amigas and more loot dinos for more juicy loot. We actually got some decent loot from this Alpha Tech Raptor that you can see here. It was, it was okay, we were going to grind most of it anyway, but did more killing, but we also knocked out a Prime Spectral Dimorphodon as well. We also managed to knock out a Beta Ice Giant Queen Bee so we could get some more honey, and I found this Mud Cake Slice somewhere, I don't know how I got it, but we ate that, and for some reason we were full of crap for 5 minutes. I, I had no idea what this was at the time, whatsoever. You guys are going to love what happens, but I had no idea. We then took out our new Boomstick weapon on some test runs against some fish <laughs> guys <laughs> i'm so sad that i just missed this i wasn't recording it was it was i was about to start the new day recording and i ate that mud cake slice and i just gave birth to a baby ultimate psychosis craptor I, I, <laughs> I was literally like putting some stuff away in the fridge and this dude just burst from my asshole after that riveting experience, we returned to tame up the previous dinos from the previous day. Yo, I feel sorry for the poor bee. Poor little thing. It's getting squashed by my big rump. Day 58 was spent imprinting our craptor. It wanted a berry for some reason. 
We also spawned in a ultimate controller Perlovia that we spent the rest of the afternoon trying to tame up. Luckily, it was aggroed on our Rex and just completely forgot about me existing. Not that I'm complaining. And we successfully managed to knock out the Perlovia as well. Well, this was the effort of our hard work of giving birth to a poo dinosaur. Our ultimate psychosis craptor. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Pretty solid amount of damage to do straight off the bat. I'll take it. It is also imprinted, I believe. Yeah. So we've got some extra stats here. I also imp uh, imbued its uh, saddle as well. So that's good. We also built a giant beehive as well with the honey from our queen bee being produced. This is going to make it easier for us to get the veggie cakes. And we tamed up the ultimate controller Pelovia as well. Which meant we can now get Omega tier Guardian tamed. We also tamed up a Metal Hyena Don that would passively produce metal. And I took stock of our Omega Souls as well. We had quite a lot throughout the Polovia so that we could absorb it into the Egg Collector. So that would uh, produce the ultimate tier of Guardian Eggs. Which meant we could get Omega. You can see there we now have Guardian. And we summoned in a basic crafting Megapithecus. However, there was a slight situation with this we couldn't actually damage it. So with the utility tames, you essentially had to use a utility tame to damage them. They took no damage from any other variant. We then received a quest from killing a wild dino. I don't remember which one exactly it was, but we picked up the quest and it was to kill 4,000 dinos while riding a Rex. This would give us four Rex Paragon Souls, which is something that we needed in order to upgrade our ultimate Rex into an Amiga. So I spent the rest of the day going ahead and killing more bosses. This time we fought a lightning manticore and we actually felt up to the task of defeating this one unlike the water mega physicus that we tried fighting earlier. And we eventually killed him gaining access to a whole bunch of new tech engrams as well. I also went ahead and killed a fairy dodo rex as well. These guys are from the mythical tier, so I believe they had a four times multiplier. So they weren't as hard as the elementals, but they still were a decent fight. The next few days were also just spent trying to get this quest progress. We needed to kill 4,000 dinos. So we figured we might as well kill some Amiga dinos while we were there and stock up on Amiga souls. We got quite a lot of Amiga souls from doing this. And at the end of the first day, we had killed 142 dinos. We then also managed to knock out an Alpha Comet Aloe, which was the next tier in the Cosmic tier of Dinos. I went to grab some cement paste and got absolutely obliterated by a Firestorm Castoroidus and all his friends. Thankfully, Fatality was still alive and well, and we managed to kill an Ultimate Essence Allosaurus as well, getting a bunch of Essence to do whatever with we wanted to. However, there are actually chests in this mod. We'll get to those in a little bit, but first off, we killed the Broodmother. My thinking was if we head to this cave, there's a ton of insects in here. We should be able to get quite a lot of kills in a relatively short amount of time here and hopefully get slightly closer to that goal. Headed into the cave and we just tried to decimate everything we could. And at the end of the day, we had successfully gotten up to 490 kills. After killing the Broodmother, we hung around in the Redwoods for a little bit, killing everything we saw. And this also netted us an actual Paragon Soul from a Terror Bird, which we would probably never use. We also got a Tech Rex saddle from killing the Broodmother, so we imbued that with some Amiga Essence as well and chucked that onto Fatality instead of his regular Rex saddle. We then went ahead and killed another Beta Soul combi before summoning in a Beta Cursed Morelotops. However, we attacked it too soon and it despawned. Now, these are the chests I was talking about earlier. They're essentially powered up loot drops and give us extra good loot, but we need to pay Essence in order to open them. The next day we made the industrial cooker so that we could make up all the sweet veggie cakes with ease instead of using a cooking pot. We needed the sweet veggie cakes in order to make the final tier of kibble. We also installed a dino tracker mod so that I could now track down dinos and find particular ones. I feel like we had gone through Amiga without using this for long enough, but now it was getting to the end game side of things that we were going to start to need to find specific dinos. So we managed to knock out and tame this ultimate psychosis Tyranodon, and we also knocked out this prime medial Dimorphodon, which we tamed as well. This Dino Tracker mod was great. We were able to find whatever we wanted, and we found this Amiga Essence Shinehorn, this Amiga Loot Terra Bird. We got a bunch of loot, a bunch of essences, and then we also found a loot Trudon. Look at all this Ascendant tier loot and all this essence that we had managed to get. 
Majority of the loot would get grinded up, but there were some replacements. With the essence we found, we were able to open up some chests as well, which granted us these soul shards in the top left hand corner, which we could use to upgrade our equipment back at the base. We then also found another prime soul, Jaboa, and right next to that we also had a treasure Ovis. This would highlight treasure chests in the area for us, which enabled us to unlock even more treasure chests to get even more loot. This Dino Tracker mod is really good, however I wouldn't recommend using it until you're sort of halfway through, maybe a th like three quarters of the way through the mod, which is where I figured we were up to at this stage, because it does kind of ruin it for you when you can track down every dino that you possibly need. But I feel like I definitely completed most of it without it. Day 69 was spent nice. opening more loot chests for more loot. I had just the treasure hunter buff, so I figured we could go ahead and hunt more of these down. Found a chest wanting 1600 meager essence. That was a butt ton that I didn't have. Then we found the water crystal wyvern queen just hovering about in the open world. There was one downside to this, however. She could only be damaged by players. So we had to actually fight her on foot, so we didn't even bother with that. On returning to the base, the soul shards that I had gathered were used to craft the egg upgrade for the egg collector. This would increase the production rate of eggs, and then I chucked all the loot that I didn't want into our dimensional grinder so that I could break all of this down into useful resources because I wasn't going to use any of this. We got a butt ton of resources as well as souls from grinding down at the Amiga weapons. Day 71 and we had found a beta element Trudon. This time however I wasn't going to kill it. So I got to work at net gunning it and then knocking it out with my club and we had successfully knocked it out cheering. Then I checked the dino searcher and we had found a paragon rex. It was only level 5 so that made our job so much easier. However it was down in the chalk hills so we had to make our way down there in order to kill it. Now, the reason we wanted to kill this Paragon Rex was because it would allow us to upgrade Fatality from an Ultimate Lethal Rex to an Amiga Lethal Rex. So we took Hulk out to kill the Paragon Rex just because he's so much faster than getting around and then Fatality, and we successfully managed to kill the Paragon Rex, grabbing its soul in the process. But we also managed to grab a Deinonychus Paragon Soul as well. So we made the upgrade item for our Rex, chucked it in there, and just like that, Fatality went from an ultimate lethal Rex to an Amiga lethal Rex, doubling his stats in the process. Now, a little bit of a mistake on my part is this is where you use Paragon Souls. Paragon Souls increase the stats of your dinos by double each time, and you can use a maximum of 10 Paragon Souls. However, I was not aware of this and didn't even think about that or find out about this until about day 90. So we'll get into that more on later but you can see here we were going to try and track down a Amiga Comet Fenra. We had found one of these guys in the snow biome and they were 147 which meant we didn't need to worry about having to try and upgrade it with a Paragon Soul. So I got to work at trying to knock it out. It was a very tedious project but we ended up knocking it out successfully and taming it up. We also called the Fenra Lee Reed due to a guy that we know. So shout out to Lee Reed for watching this video. Here's your Fenra. We then tested out the Fenra and seeing its capabilities. Now this guy was actually kind of good because his frozen attack would freeze the enemies and then it would rain down meteors upon them and they would take the burn damage. The next day we managed to find a female Prime Comet Fenra. Now yes it was a tier below our, it was two tiers below our Omega tiered Fenra, however we could still breed them as they were the same variants. We also found an Amiga Reflective Rex and it was in the name. I knocked myself out with my own Trank Arrow and the Rex just wandered around. Thankfully it didn't actually come over and kill me, so it just continued fighting that Bronto, but we were able to successfully knock out the Amiga Reflective Rex as well. We tamed up the Prime Comet Fenra as well and got her back to base as well as the Amiga Reflective Rex. On returning to base, we bred up our two Fenras, producing an egg in the process, and then we spent the rest of the day using our brand new Amiga Rex to kill as many bosses as we possibly could. The next day was once again spent killing bosses, however I took a bit of time in between killing bosses to tame up a prime Firestorm Pteranodon when I decided to go up against a Meteor Dodo Wyvern. 
thinking everything was okay. Look at the damage we were doing. It wasn't really doing anything dangerous to us. Yo! Well, that's fucked. We are fucked now. Holy shit, that thing just wiped out our wrecks like it was nothing. Uh, and I didn't have any backups. That was our only lethality wrecks. Well, uh, this is going to be a challenge. So for the time being, I focused on my Fenris. With only 25 days left to go, I had to come up with a plan. Thankfully, I did find an Amiga Singularity Yeti out here, and it had a 2.7 million health, which seemed like a very large amount of health to me. So we went ahead and knocked it out and tried to tame it up. Thankfully, we were able to knock it out successfully, and then we returned the next day to finish taming it up. This guy was an absolute beast. That's kind of crazy. The next day, we had found an Amiga Absorbent Tropical Crystal Wyvern. These guys were able to generate a force field around themselves that would allow them to absorb any damage dealt to anything in the vicinity. So I figured it would be a very good boss tame dino to get. So with our Yeti, we pursued it and we were able to actually sit on the back of our Yeti and fire our bow off it. However, I do love hit registration in this game. It's super fun when it wants to work. We successfully managed to knock out the Amiga Absorbent Triple Crystal Wyvern. That's a goddamn mouthful. We'll try saying that time five times faster. We returned and successfully tamed up the Crystal Wyvern, and it came out with 6.6 .6 million health. I was really happy about that. I then also found an Ultimate Water Storm Kairuku, which I didn't actually have this tier yet, so I went ahead and knocked it out. This would enable us to get Omega Tier Elementals. The next day, the breeding continued. Now, these guys were on quite a long timer for breeding due to the way Ark Amiga works. However, me being the idiot did not realize this, however. So, breeding isn't actually the way you're supposed to play Amiga. You're supposed to not bother breeding an armor. You're supposed to just have one or two main dinosaurs from each variant. I didn't realize that, but nonetheless, we then went ahead and found an Amiga Gamma Ray Deinonychus. I figured Deinonychuses would be useful against the bosses because of their bleed effect, and we had seen what Gamma Ray Dinos had done to us in the past. However, it was stuck on this corpse, so I tried to clear it, but it got me instead. I don't know how it got unstuck, but it did. So we returned to it, firing more Trank Arrows into it, and it got us once again. Third time is a charm, right? You would be correct in saying that. Third time we returned to it, managed to net it, but not before our bow decided to glitch out and just have issues with it. So we had to keep reloading until it decided to work. We successfully managed to knock it out and tame it, and so we headed back to base. The next day we returned back to the White Cliffs and gathered a really good set of Ascendant Leggings, which is awesome. We could really use those, we didn't have good leggings. We also managed to kill an Amiga Essence Anki and tame up a Beta Explosive Dodicarus, as well as a Beta Breeding Triceratops, and we killed an Ultimate Soul Bronto after a huge slog of time. That took us so long. We also tamed up a Meltdown Carbonemus and killed an Amiga Soul Jaboa. We were just farming up resources at this stage, but we got absolutely murdered by an Amiga Familiar Titan Minina. There was an Essence Titan Minina here that I wanted to kill for all the Essence. So we flew back out there and got absolutely obliterated by minions. Thankfully, we had Big Boy on hand and we pretty much just used Big Boy to kill the Essence Titan Minina, but not before an Amiga Meltdown Dimorphodon killed me again. And then the trouble started. Lee had disappeared. He was the Fenra that we were riding into the Redwoods with, and he was gone. I could not find him anywhere, I could not find a body bag anywhere, there was no thingy of him in the tribe log, no death, nothing, he just vanished. The next day we returned back to breeding up our Fenras when I realized I had a Fenra Paragon Soul. Now I could actually use this to upgrade one of the ultimate Fenras into an Amiga so that we could just breed the Amigas together and have Amiga Fenras pumping out from the offspring. Fed it to the ultimate Fenra, and we now had the two Amiga Fenras. I was super happy about that. I also tamed up a Raptor. I don't even remember what this Raptor was for, but it must have been something important. So day 83 brought me testing out our brand new Fenra pack against the bosses. However, I got super unlucky and had to fight 
this goddamn teleporter Megapithecus. It was a super annoying fight, but we managed to kill it in the end without losing anything. And then uh, we summoned in a basic Spectral Broodmother to fight with our Fenris and our Deinonychus and our Reflective Rex. We were able to pretty much effectively nuke this Broodmother. Our Deinonychus, I think, was doing the most work with the Gamma Ray and its bleed, but we were able to kill it pretty effectively. So I figured these guys would make decent boss fighting dinos till the end. Well, I would hope so anyway, because I didn't know what actually awaited us. Took a quick look in my Trudon's inventory for the amount of element, and yeah, that speaks for itself. We then managed to tame up an ultimate Comet Deinonychus as well, so we could now breed our two Deinonychus together. Granted, they are different variants, but I had to upgrade this one first to an Amiga tier so that I would just get Amiga Deinonychuses. But it would be Amiga Comets and Amiga... We then also tracked down an Amiga Supernova Fenro, which we could throw into our mix of Fenris and use them to breed up. So I shot my first train arrow and had built a trap for it, and you're not going to believe my luck. Watch this. Right before the damn trap, it decides to turn away and walk away. So you can obviously guess what's going to happen. You can definitely see that this guy is not going to end up going into the trap whatsoever. Nonetheless, I was able to successfully knock out the Supernova Fenra, as well as tame it up. Day 86 arrived and we had tamed up an Amiga Controller Dodo. You're probably wondering, well, what do we need that for? Turns out you can actually make hybrids in Amiga and I only realized now. So all we needed to do was tame up two dinos of the same T, which happened to be an Amiga Rex and an Amiga Dodo, bred them, and we got a hybrid dino. <laughs> With a big ass head. Look at the size of that head. An Amiga Reflective Rex Dodo. So this is what we ended up getting. I'm a bit sad I only found out about the splicer now, but uh, this is our Rex Dodo. The next few days were spent breeding and hatching up more Fenra eggs as well as Deinonychus eggs. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this isn't really the proper way you're supposed to progress through Amiga. And I only discovered this after day 90 essentially, which is the next day coming up. But uh, I was kicking myself a little bit for this because I didn't realize that that's not how you're supposed to play Amiga. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. I mean, I guess you could play however you want to by building an army up or whatever. But I found that uh, I found out that you're better off essentially using multiple single dinos that have been tiered up utilizing Paragon Souls. Now, I wasn't aware of this earlier. So, unfortunately... I did have to rush to get some Paragon Souls for a team, but you'll see that up and coming. So at the moment, we were just letting rip all of our babies. And I'd essentially assembled an army of Cosmic Deinonychus and Cosmic Fenris. So I took them all out and we decided to test them out on some bosses. And here we have the Beta Ship Manticore. Thankfully, I also had my Absorbent Wyvern which we could use to absorb all the damage from our teams around us by using health potions as well as stamina potions. We were able to kill the beta shield manticore with rather ease, I would say. So we went to the next step above, the alpha broodmother. All of these guys tear up in order for us to fight the next tier of bosses, which are the gods. And essentially, once you get to the prime tier of bosses, of these bosses here that you can see here, which is what we're fighting here, you are capable of taking on the gods. So we wanted to test ourselves by killing this prime collective manticore and we succeeded. So I figured we were ready for the god bosses. I even managed to kill an ultimate. We did also kill another Paragon Fenra and, and a Paragon Tropical Crystal Wyvern, which we fed to Big Boy and that doubled their stats to 51 million HP. And I also fed the Paragon Soul to another Fenra as well. Now it was go time and the realization of using Paragon Souls to rank up my dinos was what I should have been focusing on the entire time dawned on me. So I set out to try and tame a unique direwolf called Frostbite. Now unique dinos are also increased in stats and everything and they also have two unique abilities. So I knocked out two different direwolves and I accidentally killed Frostbite thinking it was the other one. I was kicking myself for this and I aided myself as well. I figured Dire Wolves would be a good source of Paragon Souls because they spawned in so many packs and whenever I looked on the Dino Finder there was always a ton of Paragon Dire Wolves. So that's exactly what I spent the next few days doing, farming up Paragon Dire Wolf Souls. 
There were tons of these guys and I needed as many as I could get because this was going to be my main dino that we were going to ride on for the bosses. So I went ahead and killed every single Paragon dire wolf that I could find in the area. Thankfully the dino tracker made it a lot easier but like I mentioned earlier these guys would just spawn in on the droves. So we continued killing them well into day 97. And then we had found the perfect direwolf, an Amiga Gamma Ray direwolf at level 148. I was trying to munch on this corpse, but thankfully I did have my net gun on hand and my very strong bow as well as a bunch of Amiga knockout arrows. So I got to work at trying to knock out this Amiga direwolf, and this was the selected chosen direwolf that we were going to use to pump full of Paragon Souls. Wonderful for it, and us hopefully. After teaming up the Dire Wolf, we decided to call it Bark as well, and then it was time to give it all the Paragon Souls. So we got all these Paragon Souls. Got all these Paragon Souls that we've been getting from Dire Wolves, because Dire Wolves, Paragons just spawn in like crazy, because there's so many Dire Wolves on the map, and they all spawn in. So we're going to feed all these Paragon Souls to our boy. We're going to see what he comes out in. He's got no extra levels at the moment because we haven't obviously leveled him up. 10 million health, 1.2 million damage. His health and his melee damage are actually his highest stats, which is great. Let's test him out on this Anki over here. Wait till we get some stamina. Hold on, let's chuck one of these into him. You know what, I'll probably chuck a health potion into him as well. Let's see what we do. 400k. Now that's with the Gamma Ray, I know it scales off their health, but let's come over here and attack this Zombie Anki. 400k damage. Alright, we need to test this guy up against a boss. However, before a boss fight, it needed a saddle armor. So we crafted up a Journeyman saddle armor and imbued it with boss essence to give it as much protection as possible. And then it was time to kill a boss. We nuked the Absorbent Dodo Wyvern in seconds and then figured it was time to take on the Absorbent God. Essentially, this is what you needed to do. Craft the god egg, chuck the soul of the god that you wanted to fight into the egg, and then it summons in the god. Once you kill the god, you then can feed that to your tanks to make it a god, once again doubling its stats. So my plan here was to feed the god soul to my absorbent wyvern in hopes that we could then go ahead and kill the absorbent group god, which is an even higher tier of boss. I don't even think they're the final bosses. So, luckily for us, our first god was a giant snail that it didn't even bother attacking us back. Nonetheless, it had a crap ton of health, so I had to go back to base, grab myself the Deinonychus, and use that with its bleed effect and gamma ray to kill the absorbent god. I collected its soul and went ahead and fed it to Big Boy, doubling Big Boy's stats in the process up to 100 million HP as well. I was super happy about this and Big Boy was going to be an absolute beast when it came to tanking all of the damage from any other boss. So with the Absorbent God defeated, it was then time to try and get the Gamma Ray God defeated. My planning here was obviously to feed Bark so that he would become even stronger as well. First off, I had to make sure that I could actually defeat the God, so I went ahead and tried to fight the Prime Supernova Megapithecus. Now, I don't know what the hell collected us up in this tornado, but I tell you what, it is super annoying and we actually ended up losing a tame because of this. Our Omega Gamma Ray Deinonychus that had been imbued with a Paragon Soul was killed. Thankfully, I was able to defeat the Prime Supernova Megapithecus, however, heralding the fact that I could now go ahead and defeat the God potentially. So, once again, we defeated... So, it was then time for the Gamma Ray God, and this was a giant Aranio that was able to summon down Gamma Ray Beams. Thankfully, my Absorbent Wyvern was just an absolute beast at absorbing all this damage. The only downside, obviously, I had to keep a very close eye on its HP and its stamina to ensure that we didn't die. The moment we died, everything else would be wiped out, and obviously, 
we didn't want that. So I kept a very close eye on the health and stamina. And by the time I went to close the inventory screen, it was gone. It was dead. Just like that, we had killed the Gamma Ray God. So I fed the Gamma Ray God Soul into Bark to make him even stronger. Here we go, Gamma Ray God Soul. Let's jump off. Let's do it. I'm hoping... Oh, 28.1 million health. It was then time to face the next god on the list, the Comet God. Now, this was the same variant that absolutely nuked Fatality earlier, and I was actually very dangerous here because I forgot to put up the shield just in time as it spawned in, and it actually managed to get a couple of hits off on our tanks. Thankfully, nothing died, however, and we were able to make very quick work of the Comet God. He went down super quickly, even faster than the Gamma Ray and the Absorbent God. And just like that, we had defeated the Comet God. So I fed the Comet Soul into our Deinonychus to make that even stronger. And then I went and fought the Comet God again and fed it to our Comet Fenra to make him even stronger. Then it was time to farm up the God Souls so that we could fight the Absorbent, oh sorry, the Guardian group God. This involved us killing all of the other tiers of God, such as the Shield God, the Reflective God, the Absorbent God, the Collective God, and the Controller God. Alrighty guys, here we go. I am praying that we can f f freaking do this. We got our three guys. They are upgraded as much as I could within the time limit. We've got no more Paragon Souls. I may have left the Paragon Soul upgrading a little bit too late without realizing that that was going to be the way that we moved forward. But this is it. We've got the Amiga Altar. We're going to try and summon the Guardian God. We've got our Absorbent uh, Wyvern back here. And I'm praying that she's going to be able... To... I just realized it's a female and we called her Big Boy. I am so dumb. I'm praying, hold on, how long's the cooldown timer? I don't know. I'm praying that we can survive this. We've got 15 seconds. We're just gonna pop everything. Let me get behind my dudes here real quick. Oh shit, oh shit, no, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. fine. Don't stress, don't stress. All right, here we go, four, we're just gonna do that. Yo, what is, it's a rock elemental. 7.5 billion HP. He's throwing boulders. Bro, we can't even hit him. Why can't I hit him? I also can't use potions. Why can I not use any potions? Oh, now we're hitting him. Yo, go. Go, fellas. Deal some damage. Bro, he's got 7.5 billion health. What do I do here? I'm actually gonna jump off and I think I'll do it now here. This is scary jumping off, tell you what. Oh, that was close. I don't know if you guys just saw there, our stamina was just practically non-existent because we jumped off. Okay, we're just gonna fly away here. Yeah, I'm not sure if that extra Deinonychus is actually doing extra damage or not. Part of me is hoping that it is. Alrighty guys, we did just lose one of our Deinonychuses. Uh, I must have just wandered outside of the freaking range. Annoying, but there it is there. You can see they're just dying. We are slowly, whoa, paying attention here. Gotta pay attention. What's going on? We having some technical difficulties? That was scary, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what just happened there. But I pooed my pants a little bit. Did I throw the Fenrir out? What is going on? Where did my Fenrir go? I don't know where my Fenrir went. Okay, apparently my Fenrir has just fucking vanished because that's its saddlebag right there. That is bullshit. My Fenrir is just gone. It's just gone. What the fuck? Here we go, guys. This is it. He's gonna die. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. That took so freaking long. Oh my god. 
Bro, I'm so annoyed about our dinos disappearing. Like, straight up, we lost freaking Fenra and one of our Deinonychuses as well that we brought. Granted, it's like only one of those Deinonychuses. We didn't really need it all that much. Let's do it. Feed it to it. Boom. Oh, shit. It's got that look on it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We're well past the 100 days. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe down below for more and let me know if you want to see 200 days for this mod.